Hello everyone, Assalamu Alaikum. Welcome back to the channel. So we've seen some examples in the previous video. I hope you've watched that. I hope the idea is clear. Right? Yes. Today we see some more examples related again to what to the power factor correction. We'll take some examples from the book. Now you'll have to excuse this noise a little outside. Uh, this is, you know, very heavy construction going on. So we'll just have to, to live with it. Okay. So example number first for the day that is, is example number 6.3 from the book let's see what does it states so uh, a single phase ac generator supplies the following loads so this is a single phase ac generator so it is supplying the following loads number one is what it's a lightning load of 20 kilowatts at unity power factor 20 kilowatts and the power factor is unity it's one right Yes, the second is what? The second is induction motor load of 100 kilowatts, induction motor load of 100 kilowatts operating at, an, at a power factor of 0 0.707 lagging, 0 0.707 lagging. And the third is what? Synchronous motor load of 50 kilowatts, synchronous motor load of 50 kilowatts operating at what at operating at a power factor of 0.9 so leading yes yes this is a lightning load just a simple lightning load right yes now calculate the total kva and kilowatts delivered by the generator and the power factor at which it works so the total kilowatts are unknown the total kvas are unknown and the power factor of the generator is unknown so find the total kilowatts, find the total kvas find the total power factor you will get it let's get doing so the first step is what so you have got the total kilowatts right the total kilowatts you have right so first of all the total kilowatts you can just directly do from here is uh, uh, the total kilowatts total kilowatts that are delivered by what by the generator are this 20 plus 100 plus what plus 50 so 170 are the kilowatts that are delivered by the generator so kilowatts is done now for kva you need to find out the kva1 kva2 kva3 right similarly then for power factor you also need uh, that uh, the kvars right yes so what do we have let's say uh, the total kva the total kva uh one thing else one thing else the total kva you cannot add directly as they are not in phase so first of all i would write just s1 so you can have from here is from the you know from the definition of the power factor that this is kilowatts by kvas so power factor is basically kilowatts which is p divided by kva is s so s is p upon power factor so s1 is 20 upon 1 is 20 kvas right this is for the lightning load s2 which is for the induction motor load is 100 divided by 0 0.9 and this comes out to be what this comes out to be uh, 100 divided by not 0.9 7.7 7. so this is 141.4 141.4 kvas this is 0 0.707 similarly s3 is what this would be 50 divided by 0 0.9 so this comes out to be what 55.6 kvas 55.6 kvas now as i have told you i told you that what the total kilowatts you can add directly because they are the real power they are all in phase but the kilo kvas they are not in phase one is leading one is at lagging one is in phase so you cannot for finding the total kvas you cannot directly add these two right for the total kvas total s total you need what the p total squared plus q total squared under the root fine yes now for q total you need q1 q2 and q3 and how do you find it you find it from the power triangle which is what which is like this this is q this is p this is s so from the definition of sine of theta you have some uh, people have q upon s sine of theta 
is q upon s so which means s is equal to q is equal to s times sine of theta so q1 would be s1 sine of phi 1 so which is equal to s1 is what 20 multiply sine of phi 1 is basically over here is 0 sine of 0 is 0 right yes sine of 0 is 0 so you have got 0 uh, multiply 0 so q1 you have got is 0 similarly q2 you can have what is s2 sine of phi 2 so which means s2 is 141.4 multiply phi 2 would be what phi 2 would be cos inverse of 0 0.707 and this comes out to be what this comes out to be where is it uh, 100 this comes out to be 100 kva hours this comes out to be 100 kva hours now you have to put out a leading in a lagging so have a look uh, this was a lagging power factor so put a negative sign with this or put a lagging with this right yes similarly you have your q3 would be s3 times sine of phi 3 and q3 uh, s3 is what it is 55.6 multiplied by the cos inverse multiplied by the sine of the cos inverse of this thing multiplied by the sine of what the angle is cos inverse of 0.9 leading so this comes out to be what this comes out to be 24.3 24.3 kva hours and you have to put a leading or a lagging with this so this is leading because this is motor is mentioned to be operating at a leading power factor so you've got now what can you do you can calculate your uh, q total so for q total you have zero then you have to put a negative 100 over here negative 100 is for what this is this is basically in the form of j so you have a negative j 100 you put a, a kvar uh, for lagging you put an inductor or you put it as a negative j 100 right similarly you put this as a capacitive or put this as a plus j 24.3 so plus j 24.3 so this comes out to be a total of a negative and this is what 75.7 kvar this total is 75.7 j so this is negative so you could say that this is 75.7 kvars inductive or lagging negative uh, overall is lagging so put down the formula for s total so s total would be p total which is 170 squared plus q total is 75.7 squared whole under the root so the s total comes out to be what 186 this is 186 kv is now the power factor the overall power factor would be the total power the total power p total which is 170 and divided by the s total kva total which is 186 so the overall power factor comes out to be 0.914 this would be 0.914 and you have to put a lagging with this why because the overall reactive power q is lagging clear yes sir the, the 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 phaser diagram is given over here you can just you know draw it for yourself of course the leading by the leading the voltage lagging the voltage by an angle right you can just draw it by yourself and the associated angles are also given so you can do it by yourself so this was example 6.3 now example number 6.4 what does this states so a three phase five kilowatt induction motor three phase five kilowatts induction motor operates has a power factor of 0.75 lagging 0.75 lagging is the power factor a bank of capacitors is connected in delta capacitors are connected in delta across the supply terminals and has and the power factor is raised to 0.9 lagging so which means this is your cause of phi 1 and now the cause of phi 2 is 0.9 lagging it has been improved determine the kvr ratings of the capacitor that you have installed so we have the formula qc is p times tangent of phi 1 minus tangent of phi 2 
so you can find out that phi 1 and phi 2 whatever it is so find it out from here phi 1 comes out to be this would be about uh, 35 degrees or what 41 degrees 41 degrees for 0.75 this is 41.41 degrees and phi 2 for cos inverse of 0.9 is what it's 25.84 degrees 25.84 degrees so put it in this formula the p is given is 5 kilowatts then you have what tangent of 41.41 minus tangent of 25.84 the book has written the calculations over here is 5 tangent of 41 is what tangent of 41 is 0 0.8819 minus 0 0.4843 so QC in KVARs come out to be what? Come out to be 1.99 KVARs. Now this is given is three phase. So for per phase, you divide it by three. For per phase, for single phase quantities, you have 1.99 divided by three. So this would be 0 0.663 KVARs. 0.663 KVARs. 6.5 this sort of an example I've already done in the previous video if you see we'll do this in the next video as well right yes 6.6 .6 is related to to costs so we'll 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 go for the next videos operation economics then example 6.7 is again related to costs so we will also take this in the next video so let these costs be we take 6.9 in this video we take 6.9 in this video now this one i've also done in the previous video once but the thing is that i want to show you an alternative method that one you might see is a little complicated or this one would be a little more straightforward a synchronous motor improves the power factor of a load of 200 kilowatts so the load is given let's say i will name it that p1 is 200 kilowatts and a synchronous motor improves the power factor from 0.8 cos of phi 1 is 0.8 and it improves it to cos of phi 2 which is equal to 0.9 lagging of course both of them would be lagging simultaneously the motor carries a load of 80 kilowatts yes this is in synchronous motor so this can also have an additional drive load so this i would name is at p synchronous and this is equal to 80 kilowatts and additional load also fine yes what do you have to find out you have to find the leading kvars taken by the motor kvars taken by the motor the kva rating of the motor and the power factor at which the motor is operating so these are the three things that are unknown so this is just a simple sort of a problem over there as we saw power factor of the initial load is 0.8 power factor of the combined load improved would be power factor would be then of the combined load this plus this right yes and how is that so from the previous video you know this that this one is your original load which is of 200 right and this one is operating and this one is your s1 this one is your s1 which has this angle phi 1 now you have an additional load by the motor is 80 so now the total load is this much 280 and this one has uh, 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 just 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 a minute just a minute let me draw it a little properly this is phi 1 so this one is now you are s2 having an angle of phi 2 so these angles are both given phi 1 and phi 2 so from here you can calculate them phi 1 is equal to how much phi 2 is equal to how much how much is it so uh, anyways they have not <laughs> mentioned it directly over here they have not mentioned it directly whatever it is so this would be cos inverse of 0.8 this one would be cos inverse of 0.9 so the thing is what do we need to do is over here have a look the leading TV, kvr is taken so the kvr you can directly find out from this formula so have a look this would be p1 tangent of phi 1 and then you would have a minus p2 
tangent of phi 2. So have a look P1 is the initial condition which is 200 and then you have a tangent of phi 1 is what phi 1 is the cause inverse of 0.8 whatever it is then minus P2 is what so P2 is the combination of the two it is the combined load why because the synchronous motor is also taking an additional load right so you have the total load is 280 and then you have a tangent of cause inverse of 0.9. So do the calculations from here you will get the rating of the capacitors in KVARs and this comes out to be 14.4 KVARs. 14.4 KVAR. So these are the KVARs taken by the motor. Now the KVA rating of the motor. The KVA rating of the motor would be what? Would be uh, BE squared plus EC squared. Have a look. If I take this to be the triangle, if I take this to be the triangle, this one, I have not drawn this properly although. So this one is the KVA rating of the motor. This one is S of the M, this one is P of M, this one is Q of M and this one is the angle phi of M. So S of the motor, the KVA rating of the motor SM or the KVA of the motor this is what this is the p of the motor plus q of the motor squared under the root so the p real portion is already given is 80 squared plus the q is what the q 80 squared plus 14.4 you've already calculated this 14.4 whole squared under the root so which means what that this one are the KVAs, KVARs that have been injected by the motor. Have a look. Initially, this much was the amount of KVARs. This was Q1, right? So you, by improving the power factor, you have to reduce the KVARs. So you have reduced the KVARs to this much. These are your Q2. And how have you reduced them? By adding an additional leading KVARs, which are this much. So which means the Q of the motor, you can also calculate. Q of the motor or I have written over here is QC this is Q of the motor so this is also equal to Q1 minus Q2 as I did in the previous video example so for that I found out Q1 and Q2 and for finding out Q1 and Q2 you need to have first S1 and S2 this is how I did in the previous video so over here I am little changing my technique over here so from here you have got the KVA rating of the motor the synchronous motor that comes out to be 81.28 KVA 81.28 KVA now the power factor power factor is what it is the total kilowatts divided by total kvs so kilowatts of the motor are given which is 80 divided by the kvs of the motor that are given we have calculated is 81.28 this comes out to be how much 0.984 leading 0.984 leading so this is done this is done so i believe you have got the idea i did it a little bit changed in the previous video I did a little bit change in the previous video. You can also take the overall power factor of the system from here. Can you not do it? The total KVA, total kilowatts, total kilowatts are 280, total KVAs are this much. The overall power factor oh, is what? 0.9 lagging, of course, this is given. Right? Yes. So in the previous video, I made this example through a little detailed procedure this one is another alternative procedure whatever you understand i hope the previous video you've also have understood this one also you have understood both are the same formulas but the 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 the, the way of approach is different i will finish this video over here i will see you in the next one from where we start the operation economics of course this has a cost to pay the, the the capacitors that we are uh, you know uh, injecting into the system the capacitors that we are installing into the system so they, we have to pay a cost for this as well is it beneficial is it uh, you know the cost to benefit ratio can we can we afford this or not we'll see this from the next video till then take care goodbye